I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and we are being joined as part of our Meet the Experts panel with uh, with Steve James, the filmmaker behind City So Real, the docuseries that was on National Geographic Channel and can currently be seen on Hulu. It's dominated for two Emmys. Uh, Steve, did you originally envision this as like a long, like Frederick Wiseman like documentary, or did you know going into this that you wanted this to be like a docu series that would be viewed in a in an episodic manner? Uh, I think it was the former envisioned a, a standalone, and you know, um, I, I like that you you uh, alluded to Rep. Frederick Wiseman instead of some of my longer films. I think you know. <laughs> I think I've been trying to make docu-series and stuff them into standalones for a long time now. Uh, and maybe Frederick Wiseman has too. So, it, but it, when we got out there and we just, we really started to um, immerse ourselves as completely as we did in the capturing of what was going on and all the surprises and everything, it definitely dawned on us that it may want to be a docu-series. And then we waited to make that decision firmly until we got to the editing. And once we started editing it, it just seemed like, yeah, that's what we're making here. Um, one of the great things about political documentaries is you get to see, you know, great characters uh, from the series, even if they're in them for just briefly, uh, you get some great characters as you would hope for when making a documentary about local politics. And I was curious as to uh, who were some of your favorite people uh, who ended up uh, making the final cut? Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, among the candidates, um, Neil Salas Griffin really stood out for me. I mean, they all do in, 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 in differing ways, without question. We were very appreciative of those, uh, those that allowed us access. Um, Neil was this really interesting candidate. You know, he literally came in last um, in the mayoral election, but in many ways, I think he was the most remarkable person we met and candidate we met, um, which just goes to show you that, you know, <laughs> it's not always about who is the best candidate, maybe rarely, uh, that wins. But he was such a remarkable guy and such a principled guy and and really loves the city and you feel it. Um, among some of the um, the folks that, that were around the candidates and worked for the candidates, Phil Bradley, who worked um, for Vallis, for Paul Vallis, was really great because he was just a really uh, engaged and witty guy. And, and it was great to sort of tag along with him some and sort of get the view of his candidate and the election through his eyes. Same was true with Ricky Hendon, who worked for Willie Wilson. Uh, Ricky has got a nickname in Chicago, Ricky Hollywood Hendon. And I think he kind of lives up to that nickname. He's, he's very... Uh, well known in Chicago as a as a total political animal, um, who was a state representative at one time, but now is a real political operative. Yeah, Phil Bradley was my personal favorite. I, I saw the way he was talking on the phone about things, and I'm just like, oh, I know these people. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, you know, making this kind of documentary, I can only imagine uh, the immense amount of footage that you had from all these different stories all over the city, candidates and regular uh, Chicago citizens alike. What is the, first of all, how much, how much footage did you end up shooting? But also what is the process of editing a program like, what is the process of editing a program like that? Yeah, no, great question. I, you know, the, the, the shooting um, part, we probably shot over 400 hours over the span of about a year. Um, although it, it was separated because episode five takes place during the pandemic and the George Floyd uprising. So there was a gap in there. Um, but altogether, we probably shot for about a year and we certainly shot over 400 hours of material. Um, and, you know, we part of the whole idea of this series was to really sort of follow the stories where they led us, like to not go in with clear and firm ideas beyond the fact that the mayoral election and the trial of, for the murder of Laquan McDonald would be centerpieces in the story. Beyond that, it, it was really to embrace the uncertainty and the serendipitousness of capturing this city at this time and its people. And we tried to preserve that in the edit. Um, I, had, I had a terrific 
Uh, well, I had terrific collaborators in the shooting. Uh, Zach Piper, who was producer and did a lot of the sound. My son, Jackson James, who I'm thrilled is nominated along with me for cinematography. That was that was a thrill of a lifetime. Um, and then in the editing, myself and David Simpson were the primary editors. And we've worked together a lot over the years. And, and I think we've, we've just come to embrace that kind of um, organic, sort of flow of this of the story of the city and and it was really quite it's quite liberating you know it's great when you have a strong narrative to hang your entire film on there's that's certainly wonderful it's also great to not have that to to have the sort of freedom to really go anywhere so that when we go and visit with a dog walker for example um, that's not motivated by anything going on in the story. It's just motivated by the fact that he's an interesting person with an interesting job and an interesting perspective. And so we really tried to preserve that quality of the making of the film in the way in which we put it together. So we recently saw another crazy race for mayor unfold in New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. Did seeing the craziness of that race make you wish you were capturing it the same way you did the Chicago race? Or were you <laughs> glad to just stay out of it and go, I am done with this? Yeah, I think more the latter. I mean, I hope someone was capturing that New York race. Uh, you know, there's 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 a many great, terrific New York-based filmmakers, of course, that, that would, would do a great job with it. But yeah, I think I was relieved. In fact, the series originally was going to end at the end of episode uh, four with the election of mayor. And I remember very clearly just feeling like, whew, you know, we're done. Um, thank God. Um, it, as fun as it was and as, and as consuming as it was, but it, we were we were glad to be done. Um, one of the candidates, Mara Enya, when she finally saw the film, she said, I, th I think you were out there more than we were as candidates. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was true, but it, it certainly sometimes felt like, that way. Uh, you, you certainly have quite a history with awards nominations or lack thereof sometimes. Uh, but so <laughs> I'm curious as to what it was like finding out that this project of yours uh, got nominated for two Emmys, as well as, as you mentioned earlier, the nomination for your, uh, the co-nomination with your son for cinematography. Yeah, uh, it was great. I mean, partly because, you know, I've been nominated and I've won Emmys before, but not in the primetime Emmy category. Um, We've either submitted films to the News and Doc Emmys or we submitted them to the prime time and it just didn't work out. Um, and so this was particularly thrilling for me and for the team that that City So Real broke through and got these nominations because we, you know, we have a lot of pride. We put a lot into this and we feel like this is a series that is, even though it's set in Chicago and it's very much about Chicago, it's also very much about America. And I really, I look at those Emmy nominations as a, as an endorsement and and confirmation, really that that people were watching this series around the country, and seeing that and seeing seeing the relevancy of the story we were telling nationally. One other thing that I was just curious about this is kind of goes back into. Uh, how you were structuring the story is, um, uh, did you always plan on just ending it with that first uh, round of voting and then just sort of saying afterwards, this is what happened in the runoff? Or was it because that that uh, the Lori Lightfoot's victory in the runoff was so lopsided that it kind of felt like that's where it was going? And Tony uh, Preckwinkle, was that her name? Yeah. Uh, was such an astoundingly weak person on the ground. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, the, she can't even, she had to get her notes to answer something about immigration. I mean, my goodness, I, I was, my mouth was on the floor, <laughs> you know, um, it was, because, it was because of that lopsidedness of that victory that you were just like, you know, that might not be as, as interesting to include in there. Yeah, no, this is a really good, really good question. And, and just one note about Tony, it's like Tony entered the race, the prohibitive favorite. Um, I, I think we even indicate that in the series that when she threw her name in the ring, her hat in the ring, as it were, um, people said, oh, well, she's going to win because of her longtime political stature, her connection to the Chicago machine and everything. But as you noted, um, when you saw her on the ground, you saw that she just wasn't a good candidate, um, a weak candidate. And that makes a huge difference, obviously. And it did in this case. I think the decision 
going back to something I said earlier, the 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 truth of the matter is is that when we got to the end of the first round, which then where Preckwinkle and Lightfoot qualified for the runoff, we had the intention of maybe to continue on, but I at that point I thought I don't think we can put an audience through a whole other round of campaigning. I think that and and I rationalized it. Um, you know, this way, which is the heart of this film was about this entirely big group of people who felt like they could run this city. I mean, the diversity of the slate of these 14 candidates that ultimately made the ballot was part of the story and, and the way in which they reflected the city that they wanted to uh, be mayor of. And, and, and we were exhausted too. You know, and I remember talking to Zach, my producer partner, and just saying, I don't think audiences will want to see this <laughs> in detail. And I don't know if I've got the energy to go out there and do it. And he was like, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we didn't, but you know, I think in retrospect, when we did episode five, that was the true sort of ending to the series. You know, when we made the decision to go out and capture the city a year later in the midst of the pandemic. And then when the George Floyd, um, uprisings hit, it felt like the legitimate end to the series because it gave you a chance to, throughout the course of the series, to see how Lightfoot emerged and became that strong candidate that won the landslide. And then a year later, you see what she's struggling with now that she's got the job. <laughs> well, uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining our uh, for joining us for this. And we look forward to seeing you in our panel a little bit later. Same here. Thanks, you. Enjoyed talking.